The Virtra simulator is a five screen total immersion simulator with its own computer setup with a variety of different scenarios that the participant comes in to a dedicated room, sight and sound separate from the rest of the facility, and then through a series of five projectors, the scenario unfolds in front of the participant and as the participant interacts with the video, the video can change and then see how a participant uses their skills to de-escalate and to resolve the problem. Some of the simulations we use for law enforcement obviously involve bank robberies and other crimes of violence. With school administrators, we use everything from suicidal subjects to school fire alarms being set off to a variety of other school emergencies. We partner with private industry and other units of government, including school districts, on threat assessment, training, and working on their emergency response plans. We provide quality training for them that is very realistic and authentic. We want to enhance uh, the skill sets they already have, uh, and by using the scenarios with the Virtra, uh, we find that it's very realistic and it actually enhances the skills they already have. I am grateful that I'm able to go through a training like this today and bring this back to my staff um, because it's so important that we're prepared as leaders for our students and our staff. I think this type of training is very important because if we're ever faced in a situation where there is a threat to the building, we need to respond appropriately and make sure we get support and help there as quickly as possible. Overwhelmingly, the feedback has been positive and it's been a good experience. In the few instances where some participants felt they didn't do quite as well as they had wished, that gives them something to talk about and something to work on and brush up on those skills. And then when they come back and go through it a second time, it is remarkable to see the, the level of confidence that they have that they bring to it. My name is Dana Thompson. I am a counselor and professor at the College of DuPage. I went to the University of Maryland and I went to Cal State Fullerton for my graduate degree in counseling. Um, my favorite music is jazz, but I kind of like any kind of music. And I like to play with my five-year-old, who is the joy of my world. I see counseling and advising as a partnership. Um, between myself and the student. If they know that they're in it with somebody else, they're more likely to kind of stay connected to the institution. So I always see the partnership aspects of it because I want them to know that they have another person who's, who's moving forward with them. Knowing that I'm helping somebody else, because when I was in um, high school, I had a great counselor that helped me through a lot of different things. And so knowing that I'm helping another person kind of reach their goals and do well um, is what motivates me. It's really the students. That's my favorite part. There's nothing else more about it than the students. I came back to uh, College of DuPage because it's, in my opinion, one of the elite institutions uh, in the United States. And I had an incredible experience uh, working here before and I, when the opportunity presented itself for me to come back, I jumped at it because I wanted to be a part of this team. And I didn't think it could get better, but when I came back I could not believe the changes that have happened here on campus, uh, the beautification, the facilities. Uh, the Culinary Arts Building, the Homeland Security Building, the Technology Building, um, to name a few, uh, are just phenomenal. The, the improvements to the BIC, uh, the Student Resource Center, I mean, I just, I was overwhelmed. Uh, the facilities are second to none. And I, and I think that's a reflection of the mission of the school. Um, it's a snapshot into what this school is about. It, it's about excellence. It's in every aspect. I don't care what program it is. 
It's about being the best that they're capable of being and keeping the student and their interests and their um, goals and dreams um, first and foremost. And, and you see it within the small setting in the classroom, but then you step outside and you see that in a bigger sense of the facilities. And I think the two go hand in hand. I believe there's basically three tenets to what I, what I believe in. Your faith, your family, and then academics. And then the last one would be football. Um, and that's why the kids are here. They're, those three things are critical. And then the one they enjoy the most, they have the most fun with is down the ladder as far as the importance. And I really focus on the other three because they enjoy the football part. That's fun for them. Um, but the other ones are gonna be the ticket for their success and, and just core tenets of what I believe. I enjoy recruiting because I enjoy meeting people and I enjoy um, finding a fit and really it's kind of like a marriage uh, to me. Um, what we're looking for isn't for everybody. Uh, I mean this is a tremendous institution, it's an elite institution, we're looking for elite people. Um, and I don't mean athletically, and again it goes to my philosophy, the last on our staff's list as far as what we're looking for is the athletic part. There's a lot of good athletes out there. What we're looking at for most first and foremost is character and, and kids that really want to be the best in who they are, best person they can be, the best student they can be, and then the best football player. And that ties directly into our philosophy. And that's the thing that we're really looking for is great people um, that really want to be a great student and really are willing to work and put in the time and put in the sacrifice and put others in front of themselves. Um, we find those people, we're going to have great teams and the school will have great kids here that will represent them well. The academics have to come first um, and, and it's very simple and it's very straightforward in football. I mean, a, a student athlete could get hurt at any moment because of the nature of the game. And the, the whole path to their success is paved with school. At any moment in time, they could get hurt and their football career could be over. And that's where their academics have to be first, and it has to be pushed by our staff. It has to be uh, a message that we back in, in a lot of different ways, both on and off the field, as far as discipline. If they're not up to the, doing their due diligence academically, that there's gonna be repercussions for that. Um, and that also, on the other hand, that they're rewarded for um, excellence in the classroom, because that's first and foremost. And, the other part of that goes to when I recruit a kid, a young man coming here for the first time, and I'm looking at him and his parents, the number one thing the parents want from me is that, because they understand that the academics come first, and really there's so many um, opportunities here, uh, assistance here with the learning lab and the library and all the, all the different things that they can get, the tutoring program, that students can get here, you have to really try. You have to really try to fail. Um, and really that's what it is. And as long as the students are willing to work, they're gonna be successful here at the College of DuPage.
Welcome to the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Scholarship Luncheon. Today, our purpose is twofold. First, we pause to acknowledge the positive impact that one man's dream had upon this nation and indeed the world. Second, we also recognize the academic and personal achievements of our students whose lives have been touched by Dr. King. Well, the history of the scholarship was established well over 15 years ago. So we're honored to be able to continue in that tradition to honor the work and the legacy uh, and the thought and the insight of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by having our MLK Scholarship Awards program here at College of DuPage. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. However, Dr. King dared to move America from decency to equity. He dared and led a campaign where people were wanting to be seen as human. They wanted to eat at a counter. These are basic things. In the water, Laura, in the water, children. Inspired by the teachings of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I plan to use my voice and ideas to make changes in our society. Based on my belief of equality and freedom for everyone, I hope to reduce violence in my community and ensure our judicial system is fair. Martin Luther King has inspired me to use my voice when it is necessary and to speak for those who cannot. Dr. King was always a figure to look up to in, the bo in both civil rights and in academia and still is a figure to look to. As he completed high school at the age of 15, college at 19, and earned a doc doctorate at the age of 26, and since he fought for the equality and equity in education, he made it possible for students like me to achieve our goals and make our dreams come true. College of DuPage wants you to succeed both inside the classroom and out. Your studies are important, no doubt. So is discovering yourself by meeting people, making new friends, getting involved, and having fun. Oh, hey Chappie! We've got you covered on both ends with plenty of resources to help make the most of your time. And have an awesome college experience! Being a well-rounded student, like anything else, is a healthy balance between work and play. When it's time to be serious about your work, our library is stocked with everything you need, plus comfortable spaces for individual and group study. Need a little extra help with your homework? The Learning Commons offers assistance in math, writing, reading, and speech, as well as options for tutoring and preparing for placement exams. So this is an expansion to the art gallery here at the MAC, and it's setting the stage for Frida Kahlo's works. Um, it's a small addition, but it's a, gonna be a huge impact to what's gonna be inside um, for people to see here uh, at the college. I basically worked on a lot of the beginning design work, um, coming up with iterations, trying to figure out what it was that this edition wanted to be and how it responds to um, the works that Frida Kahlo was you know, presenting into this environment. So I worked a lot on that and I also worked on a lot of the technical drawings, getting the drawings set together, so I kind of bridge between those things. So, Although this is a small addition, Frida Kahlo is a huge name, and so as an architectural designer, it's really meritable to be working on these type of projects. You know, these are projects that we work on in school, we're working on art galleries, we're working on these really fun projects, and so you don't always get the chance to be working on these type of gallery projects. I uh, started here at College of the Page in 2012, immediately after I graduated high school and I was here for two years. I graduated um, with my associates in pre-architecture in uh, 2014. It was nice to have staff that was really passionate about what they were doing 
um, with their students. They felt very strongly about the things that they were teaching, so it helped us as students kind of gravitate towards that and really find our passion um, in architecture. So I mean, when you work on a project, and especially this one, where I could actually come here, buy a ticket, and experience the exhibit, it's going to feel really great because you know I've had all this background and history and learning about you know Frida's artwork, and then I know the ins and outs of the project. So it'd be really nice to see how it actually responds in the built environment, how people respond to it, and really see how you know if people really like what it is. Welcome to another episode of In the Kitchen with Chris. My name is Chris Thielman. I'm a chef instructor at the College of DuPage outside of Chicago in Glen Ellen, Illinois. I teach culinary and pastry arts. Today we're going to be making a Kahlua cheesecake. Now I'm going to show you a couple tricks of the trade as we're going along that I think you'll really enjoy. A couple things that we do that are special that really make cheesecake superb. First thing that we're going to do is make our crust, but before that we have to line our pan. Now this is a nine inch springform pan, nine inch springform pan. Now here's something that I do that uh, I don't know if a lot of people do, but I do it. In the bottom of the springform pan, there is a, obviously a removable bottom. From the factory, they put it in there so the little ridge is up. I turn it upside down so that it's a flatter surface for the bottom of the cheesecake and it's a little easier to get the cheesecake out of because you don't get uh, your blade caught on the edge as you take it out. Okay, so that's the first thing is I turn it upside down. All right, next thing is this. This is parchment paper. Parchment paper is available anywhere. It's either white or brown, and it is made to be baked in the oven. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of oil, okay, and a brush. And if you have uh, spray, spray will work just fine too. Just spray it right on. So either way is fine. So the oil, all it does is allow it to stick to the inside of the pan. So you want a couple pieces and you want them to overlap because if they don't overlap then it might stick where you didn't have the overlap. So then you take your second piece and you put it on and again you brush it a little bit with the oil and then you lay it on the inside. Okay, now you don't have to worry that it overlaps a lot or a little as long as there's some overlap that's all you care about. This will allow you to remove it from the pan very easily and it will not stick. If you don't do this, sometimes I've found that they stick to the side of the pan and then it kind of rips the edge apart and then you're like, oh, it doesn't look perfect anymore. So this will give you a perfect looking cheesecake crust. All right, so we're gonna put that on the side and now we're going to go ahead and make up our, uh, what would you call it? Our chocolate uh, outs exterior, if you will. This is gonna be Kahlua on the inside and chocolate on the outside, so our crust, all right. So very, very simple. You're going to take chocolate crumbs. This is two cups or 10 ounces by weight. If you want to use chocolate cake crumbs, no problem. You want to use vanilla wafers, no problem. You want to use graham cracker crumbs. Again, no problem. It'll work super. So you're going to take all the ingredients and you're essentially going to mix them together. Very, very simple. Little cinnamon, little cocoa, little brown sugar, and of course some butter. So the butter is what's going to hold it all together. Take your rubber spatula and you're going to mix it up. And this will take a couple minutes to mix it really well because you need to spread the brown sugar and the butter all the way throughout the mixture. So give it a couple minutes here to mix, mix, mix. Okay, so now we're going to take our pan and we're going to take all of this mixture. Okay, here's how I like to do it. I put it all in first and then I spread it so it's relatively even and then I keep spinning the pan and press it 
up the sides. Because the parchment paper is going to allow you to press it up farther the side of the pan, you can actually go a little bit farther than a lot of recipes tell you. A lot of recipes will only say push it up the side an inch. You can go a little farther on this because of the parchment paper. Okay, here is next trick of the trade. Next trick of the trade is this. In the outside corner, right at the bottom, there's going to be an angle. So what you want to do is make sure at the bottom of the pan where the angle is that you don't have too much cookies here because what happens is the guests won't be able to get their fork through the bottom of the cheesecake. So you want to make sure you have a relatively thin 90 degree angle at the very bottom of the cheesecake. Okay, we are ready to go. All right, so now we're going to take this and we're going to bake it in the oven for 10 minutes to set the crust. Okay, and we're back. Hello, welcome back. So our crust has been baked in the oven for about 10 minutes. And really, you can bake it at any temperature you want, 300, 350, 400, it doesn't matter. It's not going to be in there very long. The only reason you're doing it is to set the crust. All right, so now we need to make the cheesecake batter or filling itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the mixer. We're going to use our five-quart mixer. All right, so here is the next trick of the trade. Warm the cream cheese. There are three reasons that cheesecakes crack. The oven's too hot they're over mixed or you whip too much air into it. So you have to mix it on low speed. So if you warm up the cream cheese, everything mixes right in very, very easily. So we're gonna start with that and the sugar and we're gonna add the cornstarch. The cornstarch is there to kind of hold everything together really, really well and give it a little extra body. So we're gonna put it on our mixer and we're gonna put it on low speed And away we go. This should only take, I say, two or three minutes to mix total because remember, you do not want to over mix it. You want to mix it on low speed, have all your ingredients warm, especially the cream cheese. Okay, the sugar has mixed in, only took a few seconds. And now we're gonna add the eggs. And now we're gonna add the egg yolks. And again, the egg yolks are there to add a little extra richness. Now, whenever you're making a scratch cake or scratch cookies, you always need to scrape the bowl down because right now some of it is mixing and some of it is kind of sticking to the outside of the bowl. So what we always do is we always stop it every now and then, lower the bowl, scrape it down, and then continue mixing. Also, make sure you scrape the uh, paddle attachment itself. So again, this will be mixed in in probably another 30 seconds or so. And then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. And there we go. So we've got instant espresso powder. Adds a lovely coffee flavor. We've got a little bit of vanilla. We have a little bit of Kahlua, because it is Kahlua cheesecake. A little bit of half and half or cream or milk, really. Any of them would work fine. And then last but not least is chocolate. Now this is liquid chocolate. So all I did was I put it in the microwave for a few seconds and got it pretty melted. And then we're gonna add it right in. So if you wanted to add the chocolate in little chunks, you can. The nice thing about uh, baking and cooking is you can be very, very creative and it really doesn't matter a lot of things like uh, you could have changed the uh, uh, chocolate crumbs to graham crumbs uh, or vanilla wafers. You can make a lot of substitutions and changes and, it, and everything still works just great. Okay, we're going to scrape this down one more time, let it mix for just a few seconds and then we're good to go. All right. 
Everything's looking good. All right, another uh, 10, 15 seconds, and then we're going to pour it in, and then we're going to bake it in the oven. All right, we are ready. So what we're going to do, scrape it off. And again, we're going to scrape everything down one more time to make sure nothing is sticking to the bowl. Okay. If you wanted to mix this by hand, you don't own a five quart mixer or a small mixer, you can mix it all by hand. As you saw, it didn't take very long at all. Not a problem. So you can just mix it all by hand. Okay. If you wanted to add nuts into this, some people will add pecans. You can do that also. Not a problem. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take it and you're going to pour it into our pre-baked mold with all of our chocolate cookie crumbs. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to take this and we're going to bake it in the oven at 300 to 325 degrees for about 60 to 90 minutes. So a lot of people say, how do you tell when cheesecake's done? There's two ways you can do it. The first one is to take a small paring knife and go into the middle and see if the, anything sticks to the knife. If nothing sticks, it should be done. Me personally, I don't do that because I don't like to put a uh, hole in the middle of my cheesecake. So what I do is I use the jiggle test. All you have to do is jiggle the pan ever so slightly, and when it no longer looks watery in the middle, then it's all set. So if the liquid wateriness has gone away, then you're all set, good to go. So again, this should take about 60 minutes at 300 to 325 degrees. Hello and welcome back. Our beautiful Kahlua cheesecake is out of the oven. It was baking for about 60 minutes. And again, remember this was a nine inch pan at about 300, 325 degrees. Now, if you'll notice, I did not bake it in a water bath, which is okay as long as the oven is a nice low temperature. Now, our cheesecake here has to sit overnight and get very, very cold. If you do attempt to cut it before it chills all the way, the pieces are just going to fall apart on you. All right, so it's got to chill overnight. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wait until tomorrow to try a piece of this. Oh well. Well, thanks anyways. Thanks for coming, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Hope you enjoyed the recipe, you learned a few things. And remember, the parchment paper there on the outside will just peel right off and you'll have a beautiful looking cheesecake. Thanks for coming, have a great day, take care. Bye-bye. For more information about culinary arts courses, degrees, and certificates, as well as other hospitality management program offerings, visit their pages on the web at cod.edu.